Good morning or good evening, Lisa. Lisa, hello, Ontario. This is Regina Rollison from Use Your Powers here in Australia, in Brisbane. How are you? Hi, Regina. This is such an honor and such a privilege to be here. I'm super, super grateful and uh, loving our collaboration and our relationship and what it uh, all involves, which is what we're going to impart to the listening audience and the viewers here today. So thank you very much. Well, thank you too for taking time out of your very busy schedule, Lisa. Lisa, of course, you and I have realized not long ago that we had a synergy going because we very much empower or want to empower people to live fearlessly. And of course, that's exactly what you do as a um, Canadian um, and also US, I understand, radio host and podcast co-host and, and someone that really focuses on helping people to grow and develop, um, living for life to the fullest and living fearlessly, fearlessly and living more. And Lisa, how do you go about doing that? Well, you know, it's as you and I have talked many a time in the back end here uh, in our own discussions um, and I I love this we, I could talk at nauseum about this particular <laughs> subject Regina it's my brand it's my approach to life it's how uh, you know one of my favorite conversation pieces so really it's about um, looking back on the past of my life looking at where I am today forecasting and very much manifesting where it is I'm going and I always land on my feet and I believe in myself. You know, I'm a self-confident woman. I believe in conviction. You know, we're going to get into affirmations and all this wonderful stuff that's incorporated yeah. into my daily regimen. Um, but I've gotten very exceptionally clear uh, about what I'm passionate about, what I believe my purpose to be. And I'm one who couples that with massive action. I don't believe in coincidences. I love life. I'm a risk taker. Um, and, I just, I don't know how to play small and I will never choose to play small. Oh, and that's wonderful. And that's exactly what we're really hoping for the audience to be able to do. We don't want to just inspire them today. We actually want to show them how they can literally follow that path and live just like you and myself, just living life to the fullest and having no blockages, having nothing holding them back, totally increasing their confidence, their self-esteem, believing in themselves and no longer procrastinating or having intentions and then finding that two weeks later, everything just feels out and they go if I only could have if I only would have or if I should have and we want to get rid of all of that so yes I decided to get together and make that possible for absolutely everybody out there who wants to improve their life um, who wants to grow who wants to accelerate their success or whatever you know obstacles they're currently facing that are holding them back and that's really what we're hoping to address with what we've done and so let's talk about what we've done Lisa well, through our collaboration, have having initially met on LinkedIn, uh, I love LinkedIn because it's where professionals, the meeting of the minds, uh, people who share synergistic energies, entrepreneurs who respect and value what it is that other entrepreneurs are doing, uh, and of course, very like-minded people who resonate with each other with their individualized message. So when you and I connected initially on LinkedIn, uh, it blossomed into a wonderful friendship. We had a beautiful Skype call, uh, and then you, and I talked about having you as a guest, which you're up coming on my radio global platforms and you in turn said you know what I've got this model I've got this you know project that I think that would be a great fit for you in terms of what it is you represent how you live your life living fearlessly uh, so we started talking in a jargon that you and I both understand <laughs> when it comes to resonance when it comes to uh, visualization when it comes to unblocking when it comes to just stepping into it so um, why don't we start with you talking a little bit about what your background is, the research that's gone into this, coupled with how this merged beautifully with my brand. Absolutely. Lisa, like so many people in the world, I've had my fair setbacks. And I had um, very trying times because I used to be in the luxury industry. And of course, that was the number one industry that was hit during the GFC. And during that period of time, my mother, who lived in Germany, um, obviously a long, long way away from Australia, um, ended up with cancer. And this became my turning point. And, you know, there's two ways we can go about life. When we have major setbacks, whether, you know, you're facing homelessness like I did at the time or whatever it may be, we can choose, we can make decisions. Do we want to turn our life around 
and and just actually be grateful for that trauma. And of course, at the time, you don't think for one moment this is something to be grateful for. It's just too horrific. But once you look back, because you made a decision not to become a victim and buy into that feeling sorry for yourself, even though that's okay for a little while to do, we all do it, but then you snap out of it. And it was actually the technology that initially I developed for my mother. I ended up using, and even though I didn't have cancer, I then realized that this technique, this visualization technique that I've discovered that was actually devised by a psychotherapist, now that I've applied technology to it, it made it a very reliable and very rapid tool that also then offered versatility in the sense that we could use it because of all the enhancements I could add thanks to technology. Mm-hmm. So now we can use the same visualization technique, which, 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 which I will explain in a moment. We can use the same technology as same visualization technique with technology now to target different issues. And the issue that I needed is to get over my fears because when you have a setback or some, something that people may even perceive as failure, your confidence goes right down it literally hits rock bottom. So I needed to believe in myself. And even though all these years I was very successful, but that one setback was so massive that all of a sudden it felt like somebody stripped all the confidence of me. So I needed something that empowered me. I didn't have funds to attend expensive seminars and webinars. All I really had was my own tool. And I started using it on a daily basis and miracles just happened. My confidence went up every day, my fear reduced. And then I thought, what's going on? So I spent literally almost 10 years researching. So with all the research and self-education and education I did in terms of therapies and counseling, and also I worked as a coach, success, wealth and life coach for many years, I came to the understanding researching neuroscience, in particular neuroplasticity, but also understanding, <clears throat> pardon me, other sciences, um, including the new science uh, called the New Biology of Belief, Epigenetics by Bruce Lipton, PhD. <clears throat> pardon me. And I understood all of a sudden, having studied also the mind and the power of visualization, what this technique actually did. And I learned that the first thing it does, it manages the fear function of the brain, We can use some fancy words such as the amygdala, and a lot of people may have heard of the amygdala. But in addition to that, what it does, it then in return activates the action center. So when fear, your number one block, or your limiting beliefs that are really just nothing other than masks of fear, um, are being eliminated or unblocked, then all of a sudden you start to build your confidence <clears throat> and, and positive affirmations actually are being absorbed. And, um, and next thing you find that we believe in ourselves again, which of course is number one for everything. Yes. And, and then when we don't have fear and we start to believe again and we have confidence, next thing that happens is <clears throat> we take action, we take advantage of opportunities. I'm going to crack it this morning, excuse me. <clears throat> Pardon me. I think I need a sip of water. (laughs) It's winter here in Australia, and uh, even though compared to Canada, that's no winter. Yeah, we're at the tail end of summer Mm -hmm. here. Yeah, yeah. So no comparison there, but uh, I think the colder weather is affecting me. But, excuse me, so at the end of the day, what I'm, I'm... was talking about is that once we build our confidence and our belief in ourselves, anything becomes impossible. Or in other words, the impossible becomes possible. Don't you think, Lisa? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you've you've touched upon some key um, concepts. And I think it's worth revisiting just very quickly, because I know we have quite a bit that we want to impress upon the viewers and the listeners here. uh, Because again, this is such an in-depth topic um, and there's so many different areas in which you can extrapolate upon that are all equally important but you know I too have been immersed in the world of personal growth and personal development for decades and once upon a time before people would glean what it is I do today I was in social services so I worked in crisis management I worked with people who were disenfranchised marginalized depressed abused um, people who were really in dire straits so of course everything was awry feelings emotions legal situations Uh, you name it. So, you know, I had to be on top of my game back then. I had to be pretty 
plugged in. I had to be self-aware. I had to do the work, um, not just for myself with own healing of life experiences. You've talked about some of your poverty and things of that of nature. And I too was by description homeless for a while because I bounced as a teenager back and forth between different properties. And so the uncertainty element, uh, I mean, let's face it, I'm a divorced woman. I'm an incest survivor. We've talked about these things, but I don't stigmatize myself. I don't look upon myself or define these as descriptors for who I am as a human being. Some people get embedded in that. Some people can't get out from underneath that. Uh, I very clearly have never been one to subscribe to victimology. Um, I've been through a lot of life experiences, things that um, I wouldn't wish upon other people in terms of succession of life events. And I'm only almost a 47 year old woman and I've seen a lot. Uh, I've also had a lot disclosed to me. We talk about in therapies, vicarious trauma. Um, you know, so you get it from all angles outside of your own life experience. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I too, being a, a student of life and sponging up things that really resonate with me, I too have attended a lot of webinars, masterminds, um, you know, all kinds of different committees. But at the end of the day, you can take those, I mean, everybody's all jived and jazzed in the room um, and everything makes sense when you're with your tribe everybody's in a positive energetic state uh, but then people often wonder after they leave that environment and they return to their normal why do I feel deflated why do I feel less invigorated why do I feel less inspired why do I feel like I'm not on top of my game and for me it's always been going back to self so when we talk about self core self-awareness uh, self-intuitiveness uh, self-concept self-worth self-value, all these things that there's a reason why it proceeds with the word self. Um, you have to be prepared to do the work and it's ongoing. It's every single day, depending on how committed you are, but how committed you are is what's going to equate with the results that in fact do show up in your life. Um, it's like anything else. You can't get lazy with your vehicle maintenance and expect it to always work on, on four cylinders all the time. If you choose to neglect putting gas and oil and new tires and all of that, I mean, you've got to see yourself as your number one one investment. So I learned at a very young age as somebody who's been on my own at 16 and I've really gotten away because I'm really focused on jargon and dialogue and how it is that we talk to ourselves and how it is that we communicate. So I don't you I don't even really like the word survivor although I understand the context of it and there's a place for it. I like sir thriver, right? <laughs> I, I really I really like sir thriver because you go from the mindset of being in a survivor, which is certainly better than being victim. So you go from victim to survivor to, I say, sir, thriver. Um, and that's just because, you know, these are the different incremental steps that you can use as a barometer for the measurement of your own growth in the trajectory of your own journey and where you are today. Um, but at the end of the day, going back to the example of the mastermind, you come back and you feel deflated and you don't have the rah, rah, you know, I've learned at a very young age, you've got to be good up here. You've got to be exceptionally clear up here. You have to talk to yourself no differently than you would talk to somebody else. And for people who are in our line of work and most people in general, because I believe, uh, I err on the side of believing that we are more positive and healthy a world than not. We've got our problems, uh, no disputing that. But I focus on the positive stuff. Um, and how do is it that we learn? Repetition, repetition, repetition. And that works for either the negative or conversely, it works for the positive. Depending on how it is you're saturating and submerging yourself in the energies of what the inner real is. And we've talked about this as well. We've talked about, you know, deconstructing the programming, the false beliefs and the concepts that perhaps were imprinted, blueprinted upon us at a very young age. So whether it be within the family, whether it be within the community, the school system, your religion, whatever the case may be. And sometimes people just get so entrenched in it, it becomes so second nature that people don't even question, do I really subscribe to this? Do, is that, does that really fit with me? Am I aligned with that way of thinking? I know that's how I was brought up or I was raised to believe certain things and therefore that's how I was supposed to carry out uh, living my life. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, has anybody really asked me, what does Lisa want for Lisa? What makes Lisa happy? Um, where does Lisa see herself th uh, you know, thriving and no differently than anybody who's watching? Um, so sometimes we get lost in who we think we should be based on the pressures or the outside messaging that 
has been entrenched upon us to believe it has to be a certain way. So I got exceptionally clear with all of that. It's like, okay, this is what I think I'm, I'm possibly still challenged by. And again, we talked about this too, uh, Regina, you know, to really be aligned and for things to truly show up in your life. It's not just about consciously making the right decisions or making good decisions. And yes, that's fundamentally important. But if it's not congruent with what's happening in the subconscious, which is where things are still acting out, that could be counterintuitive. And at a conscious level, you don't understand if you're doing all the proclamations, you're the doing the declarations, the I am statements, being a good person, paying it forward, being of service, uh, taking risks by signing up for masterminds or doing something out of your so-called comfort zone. And then you still wonder why you're getting tripped up in the feeling aspect of, oh, I don't know if I can do this. I don't, who am I to think that this is something I should, you know, endeavor to do? Who am I to think that I'm worth this opportunity? And all that stuff starts to play out. And the next thing you know, this is where the term sabotage comes into place or, or <laughs> self defeatist thoughts because you have to be aligned congruently with the conscious right. yeah. and the subconscious and so I'll let you take it from there. Lisa you've touched on a lot of things and of course <clears throat> this is very important stuff because that's exactly what we want to help people with here today. Um, yes. We have the understanding from neuroscience that what you've just touched on in terms of your blueprint or your subconscious programming actually it is up to 96% you know, approximately, that, absol that absolutely everything we do and we decide on is run by our subconscious programming. Now, that is scary because that leaves us with approximately only 4% of willpower. So when we look, for instance, at people who have good intentions, let's say just like New Year's resolutions, you know, most people say, you know, the beginning of the year, I'm going to have a different year this time. I'm either getting better results or a new job, um, in, you know, or I may, I don't know, want to give up my, I want to give up smoking, lose weight, become fitter, etc. We know that 97% of all new, new Year's resolutions just fizzle out. Yeah. And, and it's not because people don't want to. Many of them really do truly want to. It mm -hmm. is because the mental snags, that we have on a subconscious level, we are consciously not aware of, and you just touched on that. They are the ones that sabotage us. Let me give the audience a very simple example. Let's say you have the intention of losing weight. Mm -hmm. And initially you're really good, you know, you're cutting down on your treats and your sweets, sugar in particular, and you're sensible, you don't bring those sort of things home in your food shopping anymore. And all of a sudden, three weeks later, somebody's throwing a birthday party. And you say to yourself, no, I'm sticking to my diet. Yes, it's a birthday party. I will join in, but I will not have any treats uh, or any sweets. Next thing, you have a couple of drinks. You're socializing. You're having a wonderful time. And someone comes along after the birthday cake has been cut and hands you a plate of a birthday cake. And you're chatting to someone. You're having a glass of wine or, or bubbly or whatever. You're feeling happy and jolly. And you just grab the plate. You start eating. That moment when you weren't focused your subconscious took over the auto processing. In other words, you're an autopilot by sheer habit. You pick up that birthday cake and you eat it. And then maybe just after you've eaten it, you go, oh my God, I wasn't going to do that. I was so determined not to have any cake today. Or how else can I illustrate it? When we sometimes hop in the car and we have a routine of always going to the same place, let's say for work. <clears throat> and then one day, perhaps for some reason, you're meant to go somewhere else. And next thing you find yourself all of a sudden driving on the route to the place that you go on a daily basis. And you think, whoa, what am I doing? I'm not even meant to go in this direction. I better turn around. What happened? You were an autopilot. Okay. Mm. So this is something, or sometimes we drive and we don't even quite remember how we get to this place because we meant, oh, I'm already there. How did I do that? Because everything we do, as you say, repetitiously actually comes from our auto programming or autopilot in other words mm -hmm. that is our subconscious okay mm -hmm. and anything that we think again and again or everything that we say to ourselves again and again also imprints on the subconscious and hence there's a whole science around nlp which is neurolinguistics programming all right okay. because that often shows up what we say or think comes out in our speech and you're absolutely right. There needs to be a congruency. So people who have the right intentions to either want to live fearlessly, you know, take up opportunities or start maybe a business or follow their dream. And we know only 2%, 2%, it's only 2% of the population that dares to truly follow their dreams. Mm -hmm. 
that just That's shows how many fears we have. And you're absolutely right when you touched on the beliefs that we have and the subconscious beliefs in particular that, that say, I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough or I'm not smart enough or I don't deserve. Because mm -hmm. something may have happened in your early life, in your formative years, maybe even between zero and six. But as you said, it could be the environment, the peers that you had you know, been mixing with because you are the average of the five people you hang around with the most. So whatever yes. habits you see in front of you and you experience and you interact with are the ones that you start to copy, monkey see, monkey do. And before mm -hmm. you know it, that becomes part of your blueprint. Absolutely. So, so what I really tried to do, I've, I've distilled a very complex problem. And Lisa and you, I, you and I collaborated on that. I've distilled a very complex problem by literally understanding how the mind works, but also understanding how powerful the mind is that we can actually change all of that because it's not all bad news. So we're not focusing on the scary news, okay, once you have this blueprint or this programming because of your childhood or dysfunctionality in your family maybe or you know, challenges or trauma in your life, therefore you're doomed. No, neuroplasticity since 1999 says the brain has the ability to change. And so what I've done, I've come up with a little tool. There's a lot of complexity in the background, a bit like software, when you look at a um, application software package such as Word, the user finds it user-friendly and easy to use. But if you had to write the whole program, the infrastructure to make that software to work, it would be a very complex task, right? So I've done something very similar. I've taken complex issues that are based on neuroscience, neuroplasticity, biology of belief, psychotherapy, NLP, and the list goes on. But for the user, it's a little tool that is simply a visualization tool in the form of a three minute video. And the user doesn't need to understand any of the sciences or even anything we're talking about here today. If right. they just want to make a decision to want to improve their lives and finally want to not just intellectualize information when they attend webinars or read books and get aha moments, I'm not saying that has no value, but that doesn't necessarily make their or match their desires with their subconscious beliefs. As you say, that congruency hasn't been established. So they can't manifest, they can't achieve in the outer world what they're really hoping for or wish or desire. So what we've done, we, you and I together, came up with a version of my visualization technique and that tool is actually called Self-Empowerment Cinematography Film, in short, SEC Film, or some people call it SEC Film because you can view it in seconds. And it is a powerful tool, a self-help tool. Nobody needs to supervise you. You can do it in your own time, in your own space, on your computer or any tablet um, platform. And if you can press play to watch a video for three minutes in the day, guess what? That's all you need to do. So I've taken the hell out of self-help. In other words, no longer you require lots of time in this busy world. Most of us say be short on time. You don't need workbooks. You don't need to do complex things. No, all you need to do is watch a little video. And if you're serious about just wanting to improve your life or become a better version of you, or finally eliminating, wiping out your self-doubt, your fears, your limiting beliefs, and finally living life without fear, meaning you can actually embark on all those things that you desire. Whether Maybe it could be just traveling overseas or a relationship. Um, it could be moving out of home if you're young. It doesn't matter what that is, whatever is holding you back, all of a sudden will just diminish. And we find that people literally transform their lives in months. Because what happens is this, when we view this little visualization technique, which is a footage where you see yourself empowered successfully climbing a climb from the bottom to the top and overcoming obstacles on the way you see yourself in your mind's eye so to speak successful every single time in that process the fear function of the brain is being desensitized in other words we're lowering the pressure of the amygdala which now reduces your fear and it increases your stamina and your resilience which is so important in life because challenges never stop no matter how much self-developmental work you do no matter how successful you are challenges never stop because that's part of life okay so resilience is so so important so once you view this visualization technique you also have music attached that empowers you that makes you feel good and you actually enjoy viewing that particular footage over and over again but in addition to that, we have embedded NLP affirmations that now 
reprogram you, so to speak. And that sounds scary. We're not attaching any wires to your head or anything like that. <laughs> what that happens is that as you're reading these affirmations consciously, repetitiously, because you're viewing this little you know, footage or film every day for three minutes, it's called auto-suggestion in psychology. It now starts to imprint on your subconscious. And it overrides, if you like, or rewires, if you want to talk brain science. Some people call it, you hack your brain doing this. That sounds right. a little scary. Um, but it really reprograms. It means it creates new neural pathways based on, on neuroscience. And as you use them, because you're viewing this tool over and over again, they become eventually after 90 days hardwired. And now, even if not before, you start to realize that things are changing for you and you may not even understand why to begin with. And that's why we give you also a monitoring sheet because so many things happen subconsciously. And we found with people that often within as little as six to eight weeks, they get promotions, they lose weight, they all of a sudden move out of home or uh, in, you know, move out of, out of a situation they're not happy in. Um, they start a new relationship. All sorts of things are happening. They're going, how did that happen? For seven years, I was stuck. And now within two, three months, my entire life is changing. Absolutely. And, yeah. And really what we've done essentially in coming back to what you touched on early on, we now have aligned our conscious desires, meaning beliefs, with our subconscious. Because the critical divide that divides the subconscious from the conscious, which I just call the gatekeeper, mm -hmm. begin to begin with, you may decide to get a new job or you know, start a business or whatever your goals may be. But fear is holding you back and your limiting beliefs, which are part of fears as well. The, we call them the mask of fear. If they say something like, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart, smart enough, I'm not worthy. But on the other hand, your conscious talk may say, I know I can do this. I will get this particular job. You have a mismatch. And the gatekeeper, every time it checks with the subconscious and doesn't find a match that is right, meaning congruent, it will throw your desire out. Literally, yes. if you can it. And that's why people become unstitched after two weeks or so of good intentions. They sign up with a gym. Two weeks later, the gyms are empty, you know, at the beginning of the year. Because right. people have the right intentions, but then something happens and something else happens and they're back in the programming. So mm -hmm. I've decided, stop it. You know, we need to give people an opportunity even those who struggle more than others, you know, some of us are a little bit more de determined than others, Lisa. Okay. Yes. Some of us have more support systems than others. Some people may be doing it tough, really tough right now. And when I was doing it really tough because I had no family support here because, you know, I immigrated from, from Germany, had no relatives here, no sisters or brothers. Um, my father was no longer alive. My mother had cancer and I was going through this trauma. I had no one. Really, mm -hmm. you can't rely on your children. Okay, my children were far too young. I could obviously not expect my children to support me at the time. So the only thing that helped me through was my own little tool. And it totally changed my life. It transformed my life. And so what we're saying, you know, here today, Lisa, is for anybody who thinks, you know, it's too hard for them, or they say, look, I've been inspired so long by listening, for instance, to you and your program, Lisa, and all the amazing people that, you know, you interview but they may say to themselves here today but I can never be this I can never be like these people that you interview or even just be like you and we've changed this now because we have embedded your top favorite 29 affirmations haven't we Lisa yes but I want to I just want to quickly say too and, and I'm reiterating uh, and dovetailing in a way that you've pretty much said this we, we in a different way but what you put mm -hmm. your attention on grow stronger and we know that that works for the positive as well as we know conversely it works for the negative okay. and you reach a point where it becomes a choice and if you still are at this point in your life where you fail to elect to see it acknowledge it and recognize it as a choice then you're still falling within the category that you're choosing to and I don't mean to say this judgmentally but we you know as coaches as mentors we're not doing our job and we're not really paying it forward and being of service to other people if we just you know treat people with kid gloves. That's not, yeah. that doesn't work for people. Um, but really you're, you're going back into victimology mode. There has to be a level of accountability. And yeah. for people who proclaim to be at the bottom or they're just, they can't do another year of no results or the same results or the lack of fulfillment or the lack of feeling joy filled, uh, which I believe is our inherent birthright. You know, we understand that and embrace that within our children, childlike spirits. But as we get older, we get jaded, we get pessimistic. You 
you know, some people, they could sit and watch CNN 24 seven, they have themselves convinced that if they've got a cold, they're Googling all the symptoms. And, you know, and, and so if you choose to focus on that, and you choose to believe and sponge that particular type of negative residence information up, what do you then think shows up in your life? No coincidence, more negativity or more of the same. If you are desiring an alternative way of living because you do deserve that, it is your inherent birthright, um, you know, what would it hurt Truly, I mean, do you want another year, another decade of the same results and being miserable? Or do you want to sponge up what it is we're talking here, knowing that there's no coincidence to the fact that based on my choices of how I live to choose to live my life, how you choose to live your life and what we do to honor our spirits in such a way that we are committed to being congruent with the conscious and the subconscious. Um, and really for the, for the minimal investment of time, uh, but knowing that that's where you decide to designate your energy and get very discerning with what you will allow into your space. Call it toxic people, call it making counterintuitive decisions, calling it, you know, play small um, or doing things that don't serve you integrally. You know, it's a choice. And so this is a very simple very easy, very accessible tool. And when you think of what people, and I have spent a fortune on masterminds, I have spent a fortune on books. And listen, I'm not going to detract or, or be the person who says it wasn't worth it. Yes, I get, because I'm positively wired, I, I see the good and the benefit and the value in everything that has been factored into my journey. I can't truly say that I wouldn't be the person I am today for not having, uh, been fearless in stepping into those experiences and sponging up all that yummy stuff. But at the end of the day, again, you get out of the raw, raw, magnetic, oh, this is wonderful. And then you're back on your own again. And you're thinking, what's changed? How come I don't feel inspired? What, why isn't that same energy that was emitted in that room with those phenomenal people, why has that not carried me home back to Canada? Well, again, you're with yourself 24 seven. I don't care, you know, how much you're in love with your sweetheart. I don't care how great of a parent you are and you spend, you know, an exorbitant amount of time with your children or you've got your best girlfriend or, you know, you belong to the best support groups or you're, you know, a, a, an advocate in the community or you're a volunteer. At the end of the day, you're still with yourself 24 seven. So how you choose to communicate with yourself in terms of your inherent beliefs, how you view yourself, how you mirror that out to the world, um, and making sure that you're as committed to accelerating your own growth, accelerating your own development, accelerating the own yumminess in your own life, no differently than you would for somebody external to you. So as empath, compassionate people, if somebody comes to you, Regina, or somebody comes to me, and you, they're having a really difficult time, and they're self-deprecating, you know, do you accept that? I, I don't give people permission to, to treat themselves or talk to themselves that way. I don't give myself permission to talk or treat to myself that way. So sometimes an external experience or bird's eye view or however you choose to look at it to sometimes be able to see you for who you are and to understand that there's some parts that need to fit together to get the picture of what it is you're, you're aspiring to have show up in your life. Call it relationship, job, money, abundance, essentially, whatever it is that floats your boat. Um, but yeah, there's some, there's some work that needs to, be had, but for you, when you think of the wasted amount of time people will easily expend without even realizing it on a conscious level that they're doing things that don't serve them. They're doing things that are counterintuitive, they're doing things that are destructive, and they're doing things that certainly won't support the vision of where it is they say they want to go or have show up in their life or how they choose to want to feel on a daily basis. Who wants to be miserable? Like, who wants to feel miserable? Who wants to feel uh, unworthy, undeserving? I mean, I just, I can't imagine being in that space all the time. And certainly if somebody like you, Regina, and this product that we've formulated together uh, to eradicate fears and, and to really work on the congruency of consciousness and subconsciousness, you know, I would be like, all over it and this isn't just a pitch I've been all over the books that I've sponged up in the past I've been all over the masterminds that I personally have attended because my re my receptivity and my receiver mode is so open 
is so open. Um, because I'm a positive person, I'm not going to shut things down and all of a sudden go, oh, woo, 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 like there can't be an element of truth to this or, you know, really, it, you know, it, it sells itself, it works for itself, it's incorporated into, there's no, there's no coincidence to what's showing up in your life and the people that you're aligning with, Regina, yeah. uh, and having one momentous successful event, uh, which, you know, really feeds and fosters and nurtures the growth that you're on the path to bringing into your life and embracing openly and, and wholeheartedly. Nor is there a coincidence to what's showing up in my life. People think it's a magic ingredient. People without knowing the backstory think that's, you know, it's a, a silver spoon that you're born with or certain kind of DNA that you're born with or you're, you're just privileged or, you yeah. know, okay, well, let's look at the Oprahs. Let's look at the Tony Robbins. If you really tapped into the backstory of what these people have risen out of in terms of where they sat in the abyss and the massive action and what they did to align themselves with the conscious and uh, the subconscious, is there any coincidence that they are the thought leaders um, that they are today and that they're known on the global stage internationally? No, no. I mean, they, they have had rejection after rejection in, in terms of the trajectory of their journey. They've had poverty, they've had sexual abuse, racism, uh, prejudice, all kinds of reasons that the, you know, the typical person in today's society um, will use that as an excuse to succumb to their own fears. Yeah. It's a choice. It's it a, is choice. a choice. It is a choice. And you've really, you know, covered that so well because it's so true. Like you, I've been through what I call university of life. I've had a lot of setbacks in my life. And quite often, even though like you, I've always been very positive. I used to think, what is it though? I'm always doing very well and I was always successful, but never to the level where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that my own programming was holding me back. But at the same time, I was always a person willing to help myself because I'm a true believer that it is a choice and that you cannot help anybody, even with this tool, if people are only interested, that means when they're interested, they will find excuses. But if people make a choice and say to themselves, I'm committed, which is very different to being interested, and yes. so I'm committed because when you're committed, you will do what it takes, okay? You will commit, for instance, to watching this little SEC film on a daily basis for three minutes because what sort of excuse can you have to say that's too hard to do, okay? You cannot simplify self-help any more than that. I've distilled it down after 10 years of research into something that is the most easiest and also the most affordable tool literally in the world and there's nothing like that out there. And you're absolutely right. It is the people who've been through hardship in particular and all the things you've named when we're looking at people like Oprah and, and Tony Robbins and so forth, they, whatever hardship you've been through actually has other, well, I always say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Okay, and everything that has happened in my life that was very traumatic at the time or very difficult and challenging, and I thought, this is it, this is too hard, I can't do this anymore. But every single time I picked myself up again, I became stronger, I became a better person, and I became more empathetic. That's why I care about the world now. That's why I care about helping everybody out there and saying, there's no excuse, you all can do it. Okay, yes. now it is so easy. You don't have to belong to a mastermind, even though like you, there's value, absolutely. But not everybody is financially in the position to do that, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, let's get started with something that you and I put together that is yes. easy, rapid, effective, yes. reliable, and now also brought into the medical field and be setting up testing for post-traumatic stress. So it's that powerful. So now I'm aligning with health professionals, as a matter of fact, I already have with two. We hit, um, we got um, third world first breakthrough in misophonia, which is a audiology issue where people literally lose it when they listen to very um, so sounds that you and I don't even notice such, such as somebody sniffling or coughing or swallowing. And that becomes then, of course, a, a, um, a mental um, issue in a sense that they can't be in public. They can't even have a meal with their family in the same room. Imagine that. And so we've been able to help them with my technology and literally turn their lives around within six weeks. Okay. Miracles are happening. So when this tool is that powerful to address medical conditions and health conditions, and we're looking at many, many applications, it certainly can help you with the fears that you just imagine you actually have because they're not real.
And right. if you say to me, you don't know what it's like to have existential fear, oh, yes, I do. You don't know what it's like to face divorce and not getting child support, yes, I do. I know, I think I've been through a lot of hardship, Lisa, in order to have developed this technology, this tool, to then say to people, you know, I know exactly what you're going through and there is no excuse unless you want the same, as you say, history repeat itself. And if that brick that came down and hit you on the head trying to wake you up, the universe saying, it's time you help yourself, you need to do something, okay? Take right. something, okay? And this is the starting point. And you're absolutely right, it is a decision, there is no excuse, don't give yourself ever permission to give up, okay? Right. And and this little visualization tick that you and I have watched, not only will do all this amazing stuff subconsciously and create that congruency, congruency, et cetera, but it does more. I remember at the beginning when I started to view it, Lisa, it empowered me and felt me so good. I was actually in tears because after three minutes, it washed away all the stuff that maybe on the day was so daunting that I thought, I don't know how I'm going to face the day. And today, if I have a super challenging meeting coming up for some reason or another, there's something that perhaps because, because we still have fears, you know, we're all human mm -hmm. beings. Mm -hmm. Well, if I have a very testing time in my life, once in a blue moon still, I mean, we, we, we do, that's life. I just throw on my video for myself. And three minutes later, I feel so much better. I feel like I can do anything. So yes. it is something you can use whenever you want to for as how, how long as you want to, but it will get rid of your mental snags. It will get rid of that negativity, Lisa, that you talked about. And all of a sudden, when, you, when your subconscious perceptions, because everything in life, as you said before, we have perceptions about the world. And they, those perceptions are formed because of what we've been told or what stories we've bought into or even the things we've said to ourselves. Yes. But when we change our subconscious perceptions from negative to positive, then what we attract in terms of the frequency, you know, we mentioned earlier on, what you actually bring into your life changes. And also when your perceptions change, your behavior change. And we know when your behavior changes, your or your behavioral pattern changes, we know then, also from psychology and CBT, your results change. And that's what this mm. tool is all about. But as I said, we don't need to necessarily understand psychology and, and neuropsychology, all that stuff the SEC firms are based on and backed by. All you really need to understand is if I now want to live fearlessly, if I really finally want to get on with life and get off the merry-go-round, no longer have history repeat itself, finally have new results, I've got to do something different. Because if I keep on doing the same old, same old, the results will be the same. Nothing ever Absolutely. will change. Wanted. Absolutely. Well, a couple things that simultaneously came to me that I think are worth mentioning here, Regina, um, is, you know, when we talk about things like legacy, too, I mean, particularly if you're a parent, I'm very much focused on how would I want to be remembered, not by the overall, I mean, yes, as much credibility would be um, attached to you know, the people that I've worked with, my peers and my colleagues, and did I make a difference? You know, did I give it my all? But for my two children who, because of their impressionable ages, they're still looking to me as the lead example. And what is it that we as parents profess that we want more than anything for our children? It's their happiness. It's their self-confidence. It's the belief in, them, in themselves that they can aspire to do whatever it is they want. We we believe in that emphatically as parents that we don't ever deviate from that message to the point when we find our children in moments of trepidation or being self-defeatist or they're comparing themselves to other people, you know, whether it be track and field, whether it be what they got on their chest, uh, the name brands of kids clothing, all the things that kids grapple with that once upon a time we did as children too, perhaps Regina. Um, but you know, what are the type, what's the messaging that we would be, consistently imparting to our children or to our partner or to our loved ones or to our colleagues or our business partners or whomever it might be that we value their intrinsic happiness that it's not just fluff we're not just giving them lip service that we actually are so in love with their spirits and wanting them to be in love with their lives and wanting to, you know, reach the echelon of all that they deserve in their experience and their time in this here and now, uh, in this realm of reality as we have come to understand it to be. So if we know that we have it, 
no matter what other obstacles we're grappling with as adults, but we know that we have it within ourselves to emphatically, consistently, wholeheartedly, and authentically impart that kind of messaging to our children and do everything we can to reinforce it over and over and over again. Well, you know what? The incongruency comes from let's not insult the intelligence of our children. If we're feeding them and we're propping them and we're saying all the right things and we truly, truly mean it, but they, on the other hand, in contrast, are looking at us and we're not kind of living by those same words of example. We're not really sponging it up in a way that it's convincing to our children. That is an example of incongruency. So if you can love your children, if you can love anybody who you deem to love and value in your life and be so emphatic with conviction that, you know, I'm going to help you with this problem. We're going to overcome this problem. We're going to do it together. Well, you have to work that way within yourself. Call it the consciousness, whether that be the child, the subconscious, whether that be the parent. You've got to merge that together and you've got to foster that congruent, aligned relationship in the same way that you do with your children to instill the right kind of beliefs, the right kind of concepts, the right kind of practices that we're empowering them to empower themselves so they can utilize that and they can take all that messaging forward in their own lives and learn how to cultivate it and maintain it and grow it and expand it as they get older and they get to our age and they go through maybe hopefully not but divorce or you know whatever their challenge might be in their life because we know life is not easy this is you give people the tools you give people the infrastructure of support to be successful in their own right you know Absolutely. you take the, you take the mastermind out of the picture you take the books out of the picture uh, you take the group, the 12 people that get accepted into like three, four day of high, high vibrational energy um, synergies, but you've got to be that for yourself. I say that all the time. You've got to be your own hero. You've got to be your own Shiro. You've got to be your own leader. You've got to be your own best friend. And so what do you need to do to support that and to be consistent with that and to be congruent with that? This video is a testament to what it is people declare and proclaim that they want to see change in their lives. Absolutely. You know, it's so easy and it's so accessible. It's so inexpensive. And you listen to this repetitively in conjunction with anything else that you feel also serves you. But this on its own accord, this in its own right as its own tool, if this was the only tool that you chose to incorporate into your daily regimen, it's positive, it's, it's easy, it's accessible. You do it over and over again. You fall asleep to it if you want. I mean, I fall asleep to stuff all the time um, because if that's really the only time that you have downtime, and there's days where I can honestly attest to that, I understand that grind and I understand that schedule, but I am so disciplined with not cutting that out of my life at all for any reason, regardless of how many projects or deadlines I've got, or my kids have been up sick, or I feel sick or sluggish or whatever the case may be, I don't care if it's been an 18-hour day, and there's been many 18-hour days in my life as a serial solopreneur, I go to sleep. If that's the only time you can do it or choose to do it, um, I would do it at various times throughout the day, not just a nighttime routine, but, you know, on your downtime, do it in the morning, start your day off right. But I go to sleep with this stuff too. And I wake up on fire. I, I wake up on fire. I wake up like, I, you know, I'm, I'm doing my to-do list. I'm crossing things off. I'm meeting with like-minded people. We're strategizing. I mean, look at, look, is there any coincidence, Regina, that you and I cross paths and this is exactly what we birthed <laughs> together? <laughs> there is no coincidence. I mean, no. uh, I believe in synchronicities and, and totally we are so much, you know, in terms of like-minded, we talk about the same stuff and yes. you are, you know, so far away. I mean, another opposite side of the world and almost, and, and, and yet, you know, we talk exactly the same way even about um, this concept. 
And, you know, you covered this so well, saying whatever your obstacle has been, and maybe we should so, sort of sum it, sum it up a little bit for people, but no matter what your obstacles are, um, and no matter what you're looking for in life, whether you want to accelerate your success, or you want to maximize your potential, or you want to maximize your wealth, your, your abundance, you want to maximize maybe um, your career path or your relationships, or even your health, this is the best starting point. This is such a powerful tool it is easily accessible because we can get it and we talk about this in a moment where people can get it but the price also you know people say to me why are you charging so little for this tool in you know the ip the years of research that you've mm -hmm. put in there put uh, put into it and and um like like many people have perceptions about me lisa you know she must have been privileged and and she <laughs> must have research grants no I got nothing, nothing at all from the government because it was so initially I introduced it as prevention in, 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 in the health sector. And they just said to me, look, we don't believe in prevention, only cure, go and sell it at the local church hall. That was the initial feedback I got when I tried to get a grant. So everything that I've done, I've done out of sheer compassion and um, my passion. I wake up every day. This is my purpose. This is my life purpose. And I'm grateful to my setbacks or what people perceived as maybe even failure because that setback or failure and failure, we all need to fail in order to become successful. So don't ever say just because you failed once, you never want to risk life again. Life is never meant to be easy. Life is meant to be challenging you, but you choose the challenges because when you make a decision and you have a vision and you follow your dream or you follow your passion, then the challenges that come your way are the ones that you choose. And even though they may be painful, but at the same time, they're rewarding. And mm. if they will empower you and you will feel so empowered, you feel so good about yourself, life becomes worth living. You're living with purpose or on purpose. And that's what this SEC from that Lisa and I've created is all about. So guys, don't hesitate. And we also give, or I give with Lisa, a 60 money back guarantee, which means people's lives have transformed in less than 60 days. So that means we've taken the risk all together saying to you, that if you find after 60 days, using the monitoring sheet that we provide as well with a guide that comes with the SEC film itself in order giving you, again, the process and the background of the SEC film and how and why it works. If you find that after 60 days, nothing changes in your life, which has never, ever happened. But if you are the first person, just write to us and we give you your money back. So you have absolutely no risk there whatsoever. So Lisa, where can we find this tool? Where can people find this tool? I mean, I know where I can find it. Where can people find right. it? Right. Uh, I believe it's on my website. I think there's a separate link for it, which I think will probably be included, if I'm not mistaken, in the caption once, you know, this yes. goes up. Um, but uh, my website is Living Fearlessly. Uh, with lisa.com and uh, I mean I've been plastering it all over social media I can be found on Twitter I can be found on LinkedIn uh, I've got a few Facebook pages a couple business pages Instagram um, because I'm really a firm staunch believer as is Regina you know when when something has truly worked for you something that resonates with you it's like with anything that uh has produced monumental results for me uh, whether and I'm not talking necessarily even in the way of just simply product um, it could be an epiphany type moment and it's been a you know something I've blogged about for example it's just a nuance or something's come across my path I'm all about sharing the wealth because people you don't know what you don't know and we've all had teachers we've all had leaders we've all had mentors who have uh, very graciously shown up in our lives whether they be tangible or intangible and we've learned from everybody you know even if it's been from a negative experience these are the things that that shape us and and make us get really clear within ourselves as to okay do I accept that do I embrace that or do I relinquish that you know do I include that in my DNA going forward in terms of my mindset and the way I approach my life or do I break it down and disseminate it all together and do go through a reinvention process I mean we're always reinventing ourselves so both Regina and I are very much of the elk when you know when you you really firmly believe in something um, when you have loved a book whether you've loved a CD whether you've loved a certain product whatever you know 
people share, you know, reviewing restaurants, whatever the case may be. Oh, I had the best meal or, you know, or, you know, somebody says, where would you go on vacation? Oh, this is, you know, this is what we do. We want to share the great yummy stuff with everybody because people don't know what they don't know. And so, and the thing is too, this isn't just for people who are, are, are drawn to be in the world of uh, personal development and personal growth. If you're kind of on the outside of this being your jargon, but you, what we're talking about, what Regina and I are talking about in terms of, I do feel stuck. I do, you know, I, I, I just don't know how to get underneath my, I don't know how to get myself from underneath all this. You know, I, I don't even know where to go. I don't know what to do. I don't know the first thing about necessarily what you and Regina do for a living or, you know, the kind of, industry that you're in or whatever the case may be no break it down we're all human beings regina's already very graciously shared what some of her backstory is that's made her who she's chosen to be today and i've certainly have had my stuff and it never stops there's always things that are going to be thrown in our path you know single parent i'm dealing with challenges every day we're all dealing with our own challenges but rather than going on and on and on at nauseum about all the things that are breaking down and all the things that are depressing you and all the people that are disappointing you and all the things you know and that broke mentality oh my god you know like when am i gonna uh, if if you're not in the personal industry uh, personal growth and development but you being a human being can relate to some of what my backstory is or what Regina's backstory is or you just you want to change that inner real you want to figure out how do I get my consciousness and my subconsciousness aligned and it become congruent how can I be the change the agent change in my own life how can I empower myself how can I make better decisions how can I be more discerning how can I be a better role model for my children how can I be a nicer person to work alongside because I'm in a better energetic sphere of yes. space that I'm emitting to my coworkers or whatever the case may be so if you're if you're struggling if you're blocked if you're not happy with the direction of your life and it's been going on for far too long as it is and you're understand that it's it's a necessity it, it, it's really a nest people have no problems going to the er and getting a prescription i've got a headache you know something's not working oh my you know i gotta take my car in for an oil changer you know everybody gives so much massive attention and investment of monies time energy to get everything else on the outside fixed it starts with self and once you start focusing on going inwards and really getting this all sorted out everything else is like boom bang boom bang boom bang <laughs> boom bang you know so it's the gift it's the gift you give yourself but it's a choice it is it is the gift you give yourself because you're absolutely right lisa it all starts with you it starts with your mindset if you love yourself again then people will also think okay i think she's a very or he's a very a lovable person because it radiates whatever you you radiate out there is really stems from your subconscious um, programming or your blueprint so that is the number number one place where you need to do the work and now it has been made so easy so Lisa look I think we could talk for another hour and um, easily <laughs> easily and look I know there's people out there who say well you don't know you know I'm really I failed so often and and I'm I'm maybe not even you know, worth the investment. Everybody is worth the investment. Absolutely. No matter how many times you failed in life, these failures actually will serve you and the day will come when you learn and you look back and you're, you're actually going to be grateful for those failures because they made you who you are and they made you stronger. And now you can just start a new chapter, start a new page, just... Mm -hmm. You know, give it a go. Have a look at this. This. Um, this what office. have you got to lose? If you think your life sucks, what do you have to lose? <laughs> like really? You know, I'm sorry. I shoot from the hip, and I just I call it I call it what it is. If you already think you're in the trenches, and you really don't think that it can get much worse, what do you have to lose? I mean. Seriously. Yeah. So this is, a I, win -win. this is an absolute win-win. It's a total win-win. And we give you the money back guarantee. So, yes. so if you spend money on going to the hairdresser or going out drinking. Getting your nails. Or, yeah. You know, this is very inexpensive. It's in, in Australian dollars, $297. Um, I think that equates to roughly, what is it, Lisa? 200, 270. Yeah, 270 or so. Don't oh, know yeah. what today's conversion rate is. Um, 
But obviously the price then will come up in the local currency, so that's easily done. Um, for anybody who is interested in buying this product, Lisa, I want to thank you once again for Oh, Regina, your, thank you, know, you. Yeah, and you are a trailblazer. And you know what? I'm really looking forward to having a full hour, 55 minutes or so, with you on Living Fearlessly with Lisa McDonald, my global radio show, because this is the stuff that me and my guests talk about, right? Th yes. This is who I gravitate to. This is who I'm magnetized by. These are the subject matters that really nurture, feed uh, my soul inside and out. And uh, so you are a true gift. What you have Thank brought, you. just your presence and your vibration and your energy, never mind what we birthed together here. I couldn't be more grateful to you, right? There's, Thank you, Lisa. Yes. This is, so when, when you feel good about yourself and you get yourself sorted out up here, you meet the Reginas of the world. No coincidence. Well, thank you, Lisa, for your wonderful, kind words and feedback. True. I feel the same. I am very, very grateful. I'm so glad the universe literally brought us together. Um, I never searched for your name. I didn't even know you existed and yet we connected. And that just proves to me yet again, synchronicities are real. Um, and yes, we, I'm so, so thrilled that we've connected. We've co-produced this SEC film, but also I'm absolutely um, looking forward to that um, radio um, meeting that we're going to have yes. um, or interview, I guess the better interview, word for yes. it, um, early next year. So for anybody who found this interesting and wants to perhaps even learn more, keep tuned um, with Lisa. I'm sure she will announce it in time. In the meantime, thank you everybody for listening here today. And um, I do have, of course, a contact page also on my, web, on my website, which is useyourpowers.org. So if anybody has any questions, do feel free to ask. Do send me an email. Thank you again and um, good evening. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Regina.